participants. Today we'll be using an eco-mapping process to help families gather information on their strengths and their resources and their supports. Uh, what are the, what are the, where are the places in their uh, daily routines and activities and within their families and communities that they lean for support? So the first thing that we want to do when you're interviewing a family about uh, their strengths and their resources and their supports is to explain why you're doing the EcoMap. And here's some text that you can use uh, or you can create your own. Uh, so we, we let families know that the purpose of the meeting is to get to know more about your family so I can understand what resources and supports you have as we begin our work together. I'd like to find out about your supports by drawing an EcoMap which is a different kind of family portrait. Together, we'll draw circles for your friends, your family, things you like to do, your job, your health care providers, and so on, and connect these back to the circle for your family using different kinds of lines, uh, depending on how much support, resource, or even stress each of these are. <clears throat> Most families really enjoy uh, drawing an eco-map or having, uh, having uh, you draw one with them. Uh, oftentimes we don't think about our network of supports as one big uh, system, um, but when we think back to Bronfenbrenner and what we learned about uh, uh, the ecological systems theory and Bronfenbrenner's work, we know that it is important to have an understanding of what resources and strengths and supports families already have so that as we, uh, as we design uh, services and supports with that family that we're able to maximize the res uh, resources and supports that they already have. So what we do is we start uh, with the family and just say who lives with you? Who lives in your house? And so I'm going to go through an example of, of how the eco map would look for my family. And so we would list Chris, my husband, me, uh, Spencer, and Maisie. And what you'll want to do is you're interviewing the family, you'll want to get the ages, just of the children, maybe not of the adults, but get the ages of the children so that uh, you have a record of that. And even though, let's say we're interviewing a family and uh, we know that we're interviewing a family who has a child with a developmental delay or disability, it is still important to get an understanding of the resources and supports for all family members, not just relative to the developmental delay or disability. We want to have a true picture of the supports and resources for the whole family. <clears throat> so next we might ask, do you have any family nearby? Um, and uh, some families will have lots of family to list nearby and others, like our family, we don't have any family nearby. We live um, a couple of states away from our nearest family and so there are no circles to draw for my family uh, uh, to represent other family nearby. Um, in Lexington or even Kentucky. <clears throat> Next, uh, we can ask, uh, what about your friends? Who, who, who should we list as friends for, for everyone in your family? And in, and in my family, for Chris, my husband, we would list a couple of our neighbors uh, as his friends. Uh, for me, we would list a couple of my friends from uh, tennis as my main friends. Um, and then a couple of other friends who don't live in my town, but are um, other friends as well. Then we can ask uh, families about all of the groups they're a part of. These can be social groups, these can be religious groups, uh, health groups, any sort of uh, recreational activities. And so we'll just list a couple. Um, for, for us. We'll list a running club that Chris is a part of and then my friends Laura and Sarah are a part of a tennis group uh, that I participate in and so there's a couple that we could list but we want to ask um, for the families you're interviewing you want to want to make sure you ask about all of those types of groups and and make sure that you give a circle for each of those types of groups. When we're talking about children with disabilities in particular um, it's important to find out about health care for any family, but in particular for families uh, for whom maybe health care uh, expenses are greater. Uh, perhaps if a child has a disability, there may be greater uh, health care needs. And so uh, for all families, but especially those who have children with uh, multiple severe disabilities, we want to find out about health care. 
So you might ask about healthcare providers. We, we could have listed uh, my doctor, Chris's doctor, um, Spencer and Maisie's pediatricians, um, and we can list a, a how, how healthcare is supported. And in our family, um, Chris and I have medical insurance, so we could list that. If a child has any specialty providers, uh, sees any specialists, uh, you would list those types of healthcare providers as well. Uh, one important question, we know uh, that for families of young children, sometimes one of the greatest stressors can be having child care covered when you need it. And so we want to ask uh, families, so who helps with the children if you need it? Who, who, takes, who takes care of the children? What if you and, and your significant other or friends want to go have uh, some recreational adult time? You know, what, uh, who, who takes care of the children? Who watches them? And we can get an idea if families have uh, support there. Oftentimes when families have other family living in the same town, that's many times who is, is helping with their children. Uh, for families like us, I can tell you my children are older, but when my children were young, uh, this was a huge stressor for us because we didn't have family nearby. And when our children were young, we didn't really have well-established social groups yet. We had moved to Kentucky from another state and, and we didn't have ready-made friends, we didn't have family, and so there would have been a, a clear gap in our, um, in our eco map there. So even though we are identifying supports and resources, the eco map can help you as a teacher, provider, counselor, also identify the gaps in, in supports. And so that would have been a gap uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago for us. So what about income? Now this is a, this is a tricky uh, topic to broach and you want to be sensitive about it, ask about it in a casual, informal way. And so when we're talking about income, is there a job or other source of income that we can list? How do you, um, what are your sources of income that help you uh, meet your family's needs? It's a good way to ask that. And so we would list um, Chris's job, my job, and uh, a house that we used to live in that we kept and that we now rent. So those are our sources of income. Um, again, uh, some families may use this opportunity to share that this is a bit of a, a source of stress for them. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk later about asking about stress. Um, but again, we don't want to prod too much about income, but just ask casually and see what families offer. What about extended family? Do you have a family maybe that doesn't live in your town, but your extended family that, um, that you are connected with? And so uh, for my eco map, um, I, um, my, I no longer have family, and so um, that would probably be the, the uh, place in our interview that I would tell you that uh, my parents have both passed away and I don't have siblings, so I don't have extended family. Um, one piece, I guess, of this eco map that's not here that I, I probably would add if we were having a conversation is that I do have an aunt who was I was very, very close to, and now she has um, been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and, and I'm helping to arrange her care. Um, so we would, we would probably list her. Um, but on this eco map, we've listed my husband's family, his parents, and his siblings as our extended family. Next, we want to ask about activities, groups, activities, routines that the children in the house are involved in. And so for my children right now, we would add um, Maisie's cross country team and uh, Spencer's CrossFit activities. He's involved uh, every uh, afternoon after school uh, with a group in uh, sort of this um, boot camp kind of weight training um, activity that he does with the group. And Maisie is on the cross country team. We could have added a track team. And uh, those, are, those are their main activities that they're involved in. So it can be athletic activities, another social group. Um, there's also a, a dance group that, that Maisie's involved in, a, a cotillion group that she uh, does every now and then. We could have added that to our eco map as well. 
and where do they go to school? So we want to ask about where, um, and you, you may know this, if you're interviewing a family of a child at your school, you all already know the answer to this. So for my children, uh, Spencer goes to Henry Clay High School in Lexington, a large uh, public high school. It's actually the largest public school in Kentucky with about 3,000 students. And then Maisie has a different experience. She goes to a small private school in town. A whole, uh, if, we, if you were interviewing me privately, I would give you the whole background on, on why we made those decisions and, and all, which would be interesting for you to learn and probably helpful for you to learn if you were supporting our family in some way. So you can see, even though we're moving through each of those, these questions fairly quickly, there's an opportunity for you to ask a lot of follow-up questions to really get to know a family. Um, you know, in addition to recording a family's priorities and our, our family's resources and, and, uh, and uh, strengths and supports, you're also having a chance to really establish a relationship with the family and, and get to know them. And it's okay if you share little bits of information along the way. It's, it's not that you want to interject a lot. Um, and, and people who are trained, uh, oftentimes people who are trained from a social work perspective are taught never share anything about yourself. And I understand that perspective and appreciate it, but I can tell you as a person who's worked with many families, for me, it works better for me to connect with families when I'm willing to share a little bit. Not derail the conversation, not, um, um, not share too much, to uh, take the focus off of the family, but enough to say, hey, I'm willing to share too, or I can relate to you in this way, uh, to, to build those relationships. And it's more than just rapport. Rapport of um, you know, how on the surface you're um, interacting, but, but truly building a relationship. So next we might, um, we're going to ask families, okay, now let's take a look at your whole eco map, and let's think about the relative strength uh, that each of these uh, resources provides to you. How strong are these relationships? And we can do this, um, um, well, first we want to ask, is there anything else that we should add? Any other bubbles, any, you know, because you're going to ask a series of questions, but you might forget something. And so if you want to give families a chance to, to add. And, and, and like I just said, even though I, I drew this eco map uh, in, in preparation for this um, video, there were already several things I thought that I could add that, uh, uh, given a good interview, that I might have added in those spaces. <clears throat> so as we think about um, the relative strength of relationships, we can thicken the lines. Uh, so you might take a marker or you might just make, you might draw several lines. You'll see in an example I'll show you in a minute that I just drew more lines if you're using a, you know, a pencil or pen um, that's not as easy to make thick. Or you could use a highlighter to make the lines thick. Any way that you want to visually depict the stronger relationships is fine. So you can see that there are a number of uh, lines that we strengthened, that we made um, thicker because they provide critical support, more support, more frequent support um, to our family. And then we ask, are there any relationships strained? And there aren't really. I just made this up, and I, I knew Chris's uh, siblings could could take this. But um, if there are any relationships that are strained, you can do what I did here by drawing a dotted line. So we drew a dotted line um, to uh, Chris's siblings uh, to show if there were any sort of um, uh, difficulty with the relationship. Perhaps you're working with a family um, that is a blended family, and perhaps there are previous spouses or, or parents of children that are no longer within this center circle, this center household, and perhaps uh, those relationships provide both support, uh, but perhaps there are some strains. Um, this is not the case for us, but sometimes people speak of difficulty getting along with um, in-laws. They find them to be a lot of support, but it's also very stressful or irritating in some ways, uh, and so you can uh, you can add a, a dotted line uh, for strained relationships. And again, this is one way to depict it. You can choose any way you like to depict strain, stress, um, and relative uh, uh, strength of relationships. 
So stressors, and I chose to um, indicate those with red dotted lines. A lot of people will say their jobs provide some stress. So even though I've got a thick line to both mine and Chris's job because they are necessary, they are critical, they're the biggest supports we have, we also find stress with those. And as you might imagine with having a rental house, that sometimes uh, that can provide stress as well in terms of maintenance and, and um, navigating issues with renters. Next, we can think, uh, and you don't have to do this with the family. This is something I want you to do. Um, you could do it with the family or just you can reflect after you listen to the family, is to code the type of support that each of the resources provide. And the E's stand for emotional support. And so we can see I have lots of E's there that provide emotional support to um, our family. <clears throat> M's are the material support. So anything that is providing income or support for material needs, like our insurance provides material support uh, and covering our health care, that's a material support. And then informational support. So I've I've uh, added eyes to the children's schools, but also you may get uh, informational support. Let's say a, a child is receiving services uh, from a therapist, from an interventionist, and that therapist or interventionist is providing information that the family can use to support their child's development. And so uh, my children's school does provide information that we use um, to help support our children's uh, academic growth. Uh, in your book chapter that you're reading, uh, you'll see that there's an example eco map. So this one looks a little bit different. It doesn't have all of the colors. We've used um, jagged lines to represent uh, stressed relationships. We have dotted lines uh, to represent um, um, strained relationships. We also have arrows. Now, I would like for you to use these arrows as well on your eco map, the arrows indicate the direction of support. Um, so remember earlier I mentioned that I have an aunt who is, is receiving long-term care. And so uh, when I was younger, I would have the arrows from my aunt flowing to me because she provided a lot of support to me in terms of um, emotional support, material support at times. But now the direction of that support has changed. We all know that EcoMaps uh, our map of, of how our family looks and the type of support and resources that we have changes. It's fluid over time. And so now the direction of that support would be moving from our family to my aunt. So the eco-mapping process is a, a pretty enjoyable activity. It's uh, as, as long as you have planned ahead the types of questions that you want to ask, and it can be helpful. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable uh, completing an eco map without notes, but you probably want to have some notes that guide your questions. And not that you want to read stiffly straight from a protocol, but just to jog your memory of the types of questions you want to ask uh, as you create the eco map with the family that you choose to interview. I hope you enjoy the activity and I look forward to seeing your eco maps.